so yeah, like I was saying, um, that, that's why I really appreciate that saying of um, let, um, let your food be your medicine and your medicine be your food, um, because it's very, very true. Um, all the medicine and everything that is good for us is essentially found in all the fruits, all the vegetables, all the herbs, all the spices, um, all the ground provisions, you know, potatoes, yams, cassava, um, all these different things, if you see what I mean, are just all good for us. If you see, it's, just, it's just goodness for you. Um, but they don't tell, well, I know a lot of people are getting more and more knowledgeable of these things today. Um, and people are more aware and a lot of people are more, a lot more health conscious. Um, I started to take better care of themselves and implement better things into their lives in terms of what they eat and what they, you know, drinking water and looking after themselves and all these various different things, you know? Um, but yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like, um, you get salt mm. and sugar, mm. which are completely opposites really, aren't they? Almost. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, like all these ingredients, really, all these different spices, really. But which man has been studying for years, by the way? Yeah. Mm. They, that's what they've been doing, really, sort of um, going out, exploring, yeah. and finding new plants and bringing them back to yeah. the Cairo or whatever. Because mm. I think, like, um, in Egypt, they were studying plants and things. Yeah. So they've been doing, I think they've been trying to, they were studying, you know what I mean? And it's been going on back into history really and having a great understanding of plants is great knowledge if you ask me. Right, for sure, facts, I agree with that. Because yeah. you, you know like you don't want to eat something that's going to kill you. True. <laughs> because there are things that can kill you. Mm -hmm. um, poisonous. And there's also so many remedies out there yeah. as well. Remedies, so many herbs and plants and all sorts, mate, that we're literally, so we've got remedies for all sorts of stuff, mate, all sorts of illnesses and diseases and cuts and bruises and infections and inflammation and, mate, you name it, that's, that's what I like, I don't know if you've ever heard of him, but like Dr. Sebi, a lot of people are knowledgeable about a guy called Dr. Sebi, and he was teaching people about all about this, you know, all about the herbs and the spice, you know, the herbs and and you know, the, the natural spring water and all these various different things, you know, putting foods into your body that are, are essentially electrical, you know. We are electrical beings, yeah, the sun is electrical, yeah. The sun essentially charges us up, if you see what I mean. The food that we need to be eating, the water that we need to be consuming, you know, it needs to be for, right for our body, if you see what I mean. It needs to be, because even food, this is again, it's going to get deep again. I didn't mean to get this deep, but it's just, it's what it is. Um, food and shit also has a frequency and a vibration. Oh, I knew that. But a lot of people don't. Mm. And that's why sometimes people are putting the wrong, putting certain foods in their body. Mm. And then they start to realise that they're not, they don't, they're getting funny thoughts. Or, you know, not feeling too, you know, not feeling right. Not feeling quite, you know, not feeling too good, not, you know, feeling, you know, feeling off, if you see what I mean. And some of people don't even realise, like, certain foods and shit carrying, fre carrying frequencies. So what you're eating, essentially, you need to be trying to eat the most electrical diet, essentially, that you could possibly be eating, if you see what I mean. So, you know, raw fruits and, you know, raw vegetables, the ones that you can eat raw, and obviously the ones that you, can, that you need to cook and stuff like that, then you steam them. You see what I mean? You steam them so that you try to make, you try to keep the nutrients in the food when you're cooking it. If you see what I mean? Because when you don't steam it, if you see what I mean, you cook it by other means. Sometimes you cook out all the nutrients. By the time the meal's cooked and finished, all the nutrients of whatever the vegetable or whatever you put in, you know, put in your food, was over. You know, all the nutrients were cooked out. Um, so yeah. I mean, it's like if you boil an onion, yeah. Yeah. And you know. Well, much, when you put it on the water, yeah, mm. you're not going to smell nothing on the cold water. Mm. Then if you boil it up or it starts getting hotter and hotter and some of the atoms come out. Yes. Okay, and then they start turning into gases, actually, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and they vibrate mm. up into the air like this and then you can smell them. Yeah. That's why you can smell onion, you know, sort of like if it's cooking, you know. Yeah. I mean, some people use onion for to get rid of the paint. 
some out or something, you know. I, I don't know if we've ever heard that one. No. When you paint. I think I'd much rather, just, I think I'd prefer the paint smell. Yeah. <laughs> Personally, I don't know what you, I don't know what you'd prefer. What, would you rather smell all day long, mate, the paint or the bloody onion? I don't know, but I mean, I, I read like, um, apparently Buddhists do not eat onions and garlic. Yeah. Apparently. Yeah. Because um, they, apparently they give you, um, they make you angry. Um, if you eat them raw, that is. That is. Oh, raw. No, okay. No, sorry. Sorry, I got it wrong. Right, yeah. If you eat them raw, they make you sexy, like in the mood. They make what? For sex. Ah, they what? What? Um, increase your libido. Your uh, sex drive. Li your a sex drive libido. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, um, yeah. They can be good for you. I don't know if it's true, but this is yeah. what I read. You know, like on onions, garlic, leek. They, well, it's funny though, with garlic, uh, it's a bit of a conflicting thing with garlic. There's a lot of conflicting information because there's a lot of things that suggest that garlic can be very good for you, but there's also lots of people that have come out and said that garlic is a poison and shit too. Wow. You know? It's Because it's, 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 it's like, like, even back in the days, people used to rub, like, people used to rub their, their weapons in garlic, their blades and shit with garlic, okay. because they knew that if they stabbed the, their rival, with the blade that had garlic on it, the wound would never heal. Okay. It wouldn't heal. They would die for certain. It's interesting, isn't it? They would die for absolute certainty, mm. if you see what I mean, because they weren't able to heal. The wound wouldn't heal. The garlic would be like a poison, essentially. So they would... Yeah, honestly, a lot, of, a lot, of, a lot of tribes and a lot of different... Um, yeah, I mean, garlic and sell for eyes where I've researched in, you know, yeah. the history of it. But stuff. I watched a really interesting um, thing on YouTube a while back with this um, professor. Um, he's, a, he's, he's actually a doctor, a professor of some kind, um, to do with food and, and, you know, all that kind of thing. Um, and he was talking about, he basically saying that something to do with the garlic, how it penetrates the blood, the blood brain barrier within the brain when you consume garlic. Um, and he was saying something, how it can affect you, how it can affect you. And I can't remember all the details now, but again, if that's something that interests you, look it up. Well, like I say, I was learning about Buddhism mm. all this the other day. Yeah. And it says they don't eat anything to do with the um, onion family, the leek family. Okay, or, yeah. You know, it's, it's all one family. Well, yeah. I don't know what they all are, but mm. garlic, onion, whatever, because it increases people's sex drive. Well, I guess right. garlic, onion, if shallots, it, shallots, all those kind of things. So. That's if you eat raw, but if you cook, if you eat cooked onion, Apparently, it gets you angry okay. and more violent, and, and same with garlic and all that. But you know, I don't know whether I'm true. I just sort of saw that information the other day. Buddhists do not eat those, okay. those vegetables. Yeah, they eat potatoes and everything else. I don't think, but not those. Mm -hmm. if you sort of mean. But yeah. I just thought that's interesting, you know. Yeah. And you know, like talking about plants, there's so many interesting facts about them. They all do different things, you know. Like for instance, mint. You know, that's another one. And there's stuff you can put on your skin that makes you cool you down, you know, they put it in massage oil. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. All these different things that are yeah. in plants. Like menthol. Well, it's incredible. Aloe vera. Yeah. Look at aloe vera. Well, they're still learning today, aren't they, really? They're, they're mixing plants up and finding new ones. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And still actually sort of probably putting microscopes onto them and discovering new things today. Well, all it is essentially is they go through these different trials. They pay people essentially. It's like, that's how it works with science, with, with science essentially, especially when it comes to those kind of things. Because obviously, essentially, most of it is observation, if you yeah. see what I mean. They have what they want to use, whatever it may be. Let's say aloe vera, say for example. We already know, all, people are already aware of all the best, but let's just say they just, let's say for example, being hypothetical, they just found aloe vera. And they wanted to find out what what benefits it could have. Can you eat it? Can you eat it? Is it good for the skin? Etc. 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 Is it is it healthy? Is it good for you? You know what you know. And what they'll do is pay twenty five people yeah. to come in yeah. and say, "Are you are you willing to be a paid paid participant of these live trials that we're conducting of aloe vera?" Mm -hmm. And if you do, then you need to sign this contract, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Just in case something goes wrong. Something goes wrong. And then they'll conduct their trials. So for 30 days, or 60 days, or however long they decide that they need to, they think they need to, you know, get the results they're looking for. Usually, I think, usually about 90 days.
Yankees, I think, roughly. Um, yeah, you know? Mm. And they'll conduct those trials, mm. and they'll, at the end of it, all they'll do is observe each and every individual from how they behave when they consume it. Do you see what I mean? Do you feel healthier over a prolonged period of time of eating this and taking this or drinking it? How does it feel on your skin? Has your skin improved? Let's apply it on your, let's put it on your skin. Because aloe vera, let's put it on your skin for 30 days. If there's any improvement in your skin, see if it's more hydrated, more moisturized, looks better, better conditioned after 30 days. Mm. And then it's just observation. After those 30 days, they'll bake they the, you know, the time. Every single day they get up and they'll put aloe vera on their patients and get them to drink a glass of it and eat a bit of it or whatever. And every day they'll write down their observations. And like after that, yeah, after six, uh, 60 days... You know, we've been I think we've been studying plants and yeah. medication and all this kind of stuff and yeah. whatever mm. for millions of years. Yes. And like I say, but it is, we're still researching it. You know, some people are anyway. Yeah. You know, like in large... Um, buildings researching it today. Yeah. Um, and like next year, we are probably you know we'll know more. Yeah. Or they will, if you sort of mean. Yeah. Mm. It's phenomenal, really. But and I, I think, think that is a big part of the purpose of life. Is 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 it, it, uh, mankind continually trying to get a greater understanding? Yeah, but uh, you know, I feel of like his his surroundings and 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 mother and nature. And then passing this information down throughout generations. So I think yeah. it's funny that you know some people are sort of focusing on making big weapons and bombs and all that kind of stuff. You know, yeah. other yeah. people are sort of researching and trying to sort of like um, discover things that will help us and benefit benefit yeah. mankind. But mm. on the other hand, we're trying to kill each other. Mm. Sadly. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a funny world we're living in, if you ask very, me. Very funny, mate. It's, it's um, And I see no strange. purpose in that at all, really. Like, what you know, like, sometimes I question why we're we at war. But yeah. at the end of the day, we've been at world war for centuries, you know, and there must be some purpose of why, there's, why it's like this. But it's funny because... Why it's like this today. Uh, an older lady that I know... In, in our community, I won't say her name or whatever else, obviously, you know, that's, you know, that's, I don't know if she'd want me to, you know, divulge her information, so I won't even say her name, but an older lady that I see in our community occasionally when I'm out, you know, going shopping or running some errands with, you know, you know either by myself or with the kids occasionally, whatever, um, I bumped into her the, the other day and she was, she, funny enough, you know, she's in her late 80s and she, you know, she's out, you know, she's still quite strong and able and fit, whatever, still, you know, goes out every day and does her thing. But I was just having a very, very quick conversation with the other day because I ran into her um, on the high street and um, we were talking, I don't know how we got into the conversation, but I remember even her, she said to me, like, I lived through World War II. I was young when I was getting on my father and, you know, was, and, his, and my brothers and all these different people going off to war and I lived through that. And she said to me, you know, she looked at me right before, just before we were about to, you know, part ways and say goodbye or whatever, um, she looked right at me and she said, Old men, oh no, she's, no, I want to make sure that I quote her correctly. She said, old rich men start wars that young poor boys have to fight. Mm -hmm. That's uh, her quote by, and I remember. She summarised, I know, I've heard it before, yeah. but when she said it to me, it, it just hit me again, like, I heard, because I, I, I heard it before, I think you'd be, I think we might have encountered it before, somehow, you know, looking at, you know, researching quotes or whatever. Um, but when she said it to me, I was just like, wow, like, you know, I, I already know that, but it's just like, when she said it to me, I just, it kind of took me about that, you know, this lady in her late 80s, you know, she doesn't agree with any of this, you know, she's not programmed or brainwashed like a lot of people of her generation, because that's all they knew, they didn't know anything else. You see what I mean? Mm. But it just kind of shocked me that this lady who was in her late eighties is, you know, she's, you know, quite, you know, she's aware. Yeah, there's you know another I mean. quote, but I'm not, I can't quite remember all of it. But it's sort of something to do with um, um, men bar um, fathers bury their sons, and sons, you know, like I can't remember the, you know, the last yeah. of it. You see what I mean? Yeah. We kind of like the old people send the uh, um, poor people to work, young young poor people. Mm. And um, 
it, you know, say war has been going on for centuries, hasn't it? You know, mm. and um, and I, like, like most of the people that I know, anyway, yeah. do, do not want war. Mm. Full stop. And I think that's most of people's opinions right around the globe. If you ask me, we do, do not want war. But here we are, sort of, you know, <laughs> this. You know, the world we're living in is sort of full of war at the moment, you ask me. And mm. I can't believe sometimes when I see things how much war is out there today. Yeah. And how how sort of um, the advanced the technology is basically, you know, the bombs they use and are more advanced and all the guns and all that. And I just find what a disappointing sad world yeah. we're living in really. Yeah. Um I just feel like it's always been like this for hundred years. Yeah. I think like century after century, people have been sort of like fearing war. Yes. And um, I think fear is part of life for really, you anyway. Fear is a part of life, but I also believe, not to get again too far off topic, but I believe that there's people out there with agendas that want to keep people in a constant state of fear. Because like we were talking about the other night, I mean, we were having a quite a deep conversation just, you know, amongst ourselves. Um, when, you're, when you're operating out of state of fear, right, you're existing and you're vibrating on your lowest frequency. Yeah? Because a lot of time, not only if you're existing, a lot of time, if you're existing in a state of fear, you've got a survival mentality and mindset, if you see what I mean. Um... And if you're continually stuck in that mindset for too long, that's not a healthy thing. If you see what I mean, that really isn't a healthy thing, you know. Um, so, yeah. I've really learned in life, because as I've said, I've been through a number of disasters I didn't really want. Mm. And I'm sort of like at a stage in my life that that's all over now, and I'm, 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 I feel more peace of mind today. Mm. And I just want to, you know, I think like, I think it's really sort of just learning how to enjoy the moment, really. Yeah. And the moment, the moment, and is what matters most. Mm. I think that's, what, and really the past really doesn't really matter, does it? Too much, you know. I mean, it does, you know, because we learn from it, and you got to sort of um, analyze it sometimes, and all this, and understand it, and all that. But really, the, the moment is what matters. And I feel like some people are so sort of stuck in the past or thinking about the future, they can, they're not really enjoying the moment anymore, if you see what I mean. Or yeah, okay, yeah. they're losing focus on themselves. So I've done it sometimes, you know, and it's really, really important to keep focus on the moment. And people, I feel like they don't listen enough either. Um, I'm guilty of that. In the past, you know, and I feel like I'm listening more now, mm. um, and because I'm more more at peace of mind, really. I mean, when when my wife divorced me a number of years ago, it turned my life upside down, you know. And you know, I mean, once I, I when, when I was living with her, I had a washing machine and sink, bath, everything, and then I was homeless, you know. Mm. And yes, I okay, it, it was just a struggle, do you know what I mean? To to have what I did have, if you see what I mean, it was all lovely. Mm. Um, it was a struggle for them, you know, for a while. Mm. I was homeless for a while, you know, and um, but slowly in time, you know, I've got myself back on my feet, mm. and I'm living a, a much better, more comfortable life, you know. Mm -hmm. That's another thing. Being comfortable is very important. Very in life, you yeah. Know? So it's just making yourself comfortable with every moment that goes by. Yeah. If you sort of mean, you know. I mean, look after your feet. They're yours, you know. It's important, you know. It, you know, if your feet sore, you're not going to be so happy, are you? Mm. you know what I mean, if they're not, if you're not bath for a couple of weeks, then, mm. you know. I can imagine that, mate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I mean, I think the purpose of life really is to be be alive and enjoy it. You know, you've got make life. The, make the most of every moment. You've got life for goodness' sake, you know, and um, don't waste it. No. Because it's not you're not here for long and. One thing I don't want is to get old and think, oh my God, my life's all, all over and all I've done is not much really, if you see what I mean. You know, I've been depressed most of my life, do you know what I mean? And not happy with it and ungrateful, 
if you see what I mean. Yeah. It's one thing I don't want to be sort of like 90 years old and think, God, I've been ungrateful all my life. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. the worst thing. Worst thing, mate. You know, and I yeah. think like now I really do appreciate life, you know, more than I ever have done. Because life is the blessing. And a lot of people forget that along the way. A lot of people take life for granted. They do, you know, especially when well, especially when they're young, or they're not educated. Yeah. Or there's there's a number of reasons I feel. Mm. Um, but appreciation is one of the most beautiful things to have. I feel you know, and if you've got that, and if you've got compassion, as well, you've got a lot going for you in life. You know. Because compassion brings happiness. I, you know, that's what I feel anyway. Mm. I think... And respecting, you know. And I think being content. Being content. And like I always say, I don't want people to get misconstrued when I say being content. Because you can be content with your life as it is and still have aspirations. Still want more. Doesn't mean just because you're content. Content means that regardless of what's, you know, going on in your life, you're happy. If you see what I mean, you're over overall. You are happy with your life. You are, you know, you are you are you are grateful. You count your blessings. You are appreciative um, of being alive and just you know having a roof over your head and being able to work to provide a living for yourself and others and look after yourself. And you know, not everyone out there might not be living their best life, but you know, they're they're you, you know, we're grateful for life. Is you know, life is the you know. Waking up every day, not every you know, lots of people will go to sleep tonight that might not wake up tomorrow, and that's the reality. I think, I think statistically, they said three hundred thousand people. Three hundred thousand people every day die World War, roughly. I'm surprised me how many people have been born though. Exactly, exactly. No, but the reason that I say that, of course, of course, of course, more people generally sometimes are born than people that thankfully, but. Um, the reality is, is that, like you said, life isn't forever, you know, we have to all come to grips with our own mortality, um, and the sooner the better, the sooner you, you know, accept it for what it is and just enjoy your life and try to do your best, you know, try to be the best version of yourself all the time. And it, you're not all, you know, and it, you're not always going to be successful, um, but it's about trying, and the more you try, the more you, the more su um, successful you will be. You know. Well, I think as long as you go out mm. there and try, yeah, you're gonna get better. Yeah, exactly. There's no doubt, no doubt about it. That's a fact, isn't it? Really, when mm. you think about it, mm. and you just gotta keep getting out of bed. Yeah. You sometimes feel like you're not moving forward, but just keep going. You do. You do. Yeah, exactly. If you exactly. Mean. And there yeah. are things like you know we've said before this. You know, you every day that goes by, but you kind of got to wash up now and again. You know, and all that kind of stuff. You know, but just get on with it. Yeah, you have to have a routine. You, know, you got to clean up after yourself. Mm -hmm. but, you know, and it, life becomes good fun if you keep up with it. I feel. Mm -hmm. And um, not only that, but we need to move around. This is one thing that sometimes people forget too. You need to move around. You've got energy stored in your body. That needs to move around. If you see what I mean, you need to get some. You need to get a bit of exercise here and there. So even if it's doing some housework for an hour and a half every day, two hours, you know what I mean. Yeah. Whatever, it's it's still better than nothing. Um, if you see what I mean, going out for a fifteen minute walk. You know what I mean. Going to the supermarket. You know what I mean. Walk around and doing your shopping fifteen twenty minutes and coming back home again. And you know all these things contribute towards being healthy in all in in all reality. Like. Like I just said, we have energy in our body. It needs to move around. That's why exercise is so important. Yeah. So. And so is meditation and relaxation too. Exactly. Yeah. You know that's really important for your energy too. Mm. I feel. I mean, personally, I feel I've had quite. You know, I'm quite happy about yeah. the body I've been given. Mm. Okay, personally, you know, it's quite strong. So I'm not the strongest man in the world. I'm no Arnold Schwarzenegger or anything. Mm. You know, anyone like that. Mm. But you know, I'm pretty. F I've always been pretty fit. Yeah. I've you know worked hard. I've done hot carrying, um, removals for a number of years, and it was all you know heavy work. You know, and I've done a bit of weight training in badminton. I used to play a lot. But anyway, 
I just feel like I've got quite a fit body. Yeah. You know, I've got a good balance on me actually. I can mm. quite easily balance on two hands and things, you know, and I can mm. yeah. still, you know, I've been doing that from a young child, you know, balance, you know, showing off and you know, when I was younger in front of people and you know, especially the girls and things, you know, to show off. Mm. But, you know, I feel like I'm pretty fit. Yeah. You know, I'm not the strongest man. But that is one thing to be happy in life. If you if you got a, a good body mm -hmm. and it's healthy and fit, that's something to smile about in life, really. Yeah. You know, and I feel like I okay, I'm not the fittest person in the world, and I, I feel like I need to do a little bit of jogging or something. Do you know what I mean? I need to exercise because I've been staying in a bit too long. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing. You know, you can't. If I carry on on staying in for next year and the year after year, you know, so you end up. Get in a wheelchair, probably, if you see what I mean. You know, mm, yeah. on, you know I'll be on a wheelchair if I'm not going to use my legs. Yeah, you got to, yeah. you got to go, you know, I've, I mean, personally, I've never had a car in my life, really, you know. And um, I've done a lot of walking in my life. And I get quite used to that in a kind of way, you know. And um, it keeps my legs very strong. And I feel like a lot of people are driving around so much and working in the office and sleeping. They really aren't getting the exercise. Yeah. I know that there are some that do keep yourself fit, you know, in the office, but there are some that don't. And that's the way the world is, isn't it? You know, and it's all up to you, really. It's your body. And it's up to you to get your body strong or, you know, or keep it slim or keep it good. You know, it's your body. Yeah. You're the manager. That's it. it. That's it. You're I'm the like manager it. of it. That's it. And um, at the end of the day, if, you know, I mean, I've always had that inside me from a young boy actually I want to be strong okay mm. and I think like reading and writing did matter yeah. so much or anything like that to me when I was a young boy it's more sort of keep you know being strong mm. yeah and and I was strong little boy you know mm. I was very strong and um and I've always been strong but I, I'm not one of these um I want one of these boys, or I've never been one of these a uh, man that likes hitting or hurting other people for no reason. Yeah, or of think Like some bullies do, you know. Mm. I'm not a bully. Yeah, and I never have been. Mm. Um, you know, I I think like following. Is there a God? Do you know what I mean, I believe. I personally believe there is. Okay, I, yeah. Like likewise. Yeah. And I feel like I communicate with him not through English. Or, or he communicates to me more than anything yeah mm -hmm. i feel okay some 